everyone. Welcome. I'm really glad to see you all here tonight. Uh, my name is Carrie Lincourt, and I'm Director of Development and Alumni Affairs here at SVA. Um, we're really proud of our alumni and all of their great achievements, and um, we're always happy when they come back to SVA for these events. So, um, as you all know, tonight is a Q&A uh, with Gerard Way and Joey Cavallari, and um, I'm going to read a little intro for each of them. Um, Gerard Way is best known as the front man for the band My Chemical Romance, but with the release of Umbrella Academy Apocalypse Suite, which he penned, that is set to change. Gerard graduated from SVA in 1999 with a BFA in cartooning and briefly worked in toy design and animation before forming My Chemical Romance in 2001. Uh, his artwork has been seen on the album cover Three Cheers for Sweet Revenge, as well as set and costume designs for the tour of the album The Black Parade. Um, he's about to go on tour with My Chemical Romance to promote their album The Black Parade. Joey Cavallari uh, doesn't know if comics led him to girls or if girls led him to comics. <laughs> <laughs> but at the age... But at the <laughs> there's a really great interview online if you want to find the interview where you talk about Not for that long. <laughs> um, but at the age of three, a girl from the neighborhood gave him a stack of comics, really? and the die was cast. He graduated from SVA in 1979 with a degree in cartooning, and soon began working at DC Comics. His writing credits include The Huntress, uh, The Oz Wonderland War, the Flash, and I World's Finest Comic that. Series. Mm. In two... <laughs> in, <laughs> in 2000, he received the Harvey Award for Batman, War on Crime, as an editor, and received the Eisner Award for Best yeah, Anthology for Bizarro Comics as editor <laughs> in 2002. Um, he's been a senior editor at DC Comics since 2005, and is currently an instructor in SVA's cartooning department. Um, please join me in welcoming Gerard Way and Joey Cavallari. I'm okay. You're okay. Yeah, well, it's a little rocket now. It's a missile. <laughs> so what's new? Uh, mm -hmm. How long are you in town for? Uh, mm -hmm. Two more days. Oh, good for you. Any comic book related business in, uh, in, the, in the meantime? I'm actually starting Umbrella Academy Series 2 any day, so. Um, no kidding. Yeah. Um, well, How many Scott issues? Scott keeps calling me and he's like, you got to start this. And I'm yeah. like, I know, I got a movie to shoot. Yeah. So. See, that's the editorial process right there. I was going to ask what the editorial process I was like, but it basically consists of calling you up and saying, where is it? Where basically. Is it? I, I also think uh, Scott Alley should get um, Editor of the Year Award for keeping uh, the book on track when you had a guy basically in Sao Paulo, Brazil. Uh -huh. And he had another guy going all over the place and, um, you know, basically being late every other day. Yeah, you know, pretty much Missing Monday. deadlines all consistently. You Monday know? through Friday for me, pal. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He pulled that. We never missed a single deadline. What, uh, now how did this start? How did you, how did you get Umbrella Academy hooked up at Dark Horse? How did, or did, did you go to them? Did they go to you? Um, no, I went to them, actually, because I really like what they do. I love, I love Dark Horse's format as far as. Uh, like what Mike Mignola did as far as setting up trades that were basically like a short series. And then when you get an idea, you put out another series. One of the things about comic books, I mean, how many of you guys are cartoon majors? Okay. <laughs> um, one of the things about comic books that I was never a fan of is continuity. I think continuity really kind of drags a character down. You know, and it ties you to all these rules. I mean, he has to keep continuity. That's part no, of my comic book. I just, you know, I love Batman comics. So you, he's got a butler. He's got a cave. That's all you need to know. Right. Have. That's <laughs> how I feel. And, you know, you look at the best Batman stories, and it's always things that are like, um, it's like year one. Right. Dark Knight Rises. Stories that have nothing to do with, like, him fighting a killer whale and shit. Like, <laughs> like, every week or something. You never, you know, that has nothing to do yeah, with it. No, that's not the, it's the killer whale you remember that was issue? green. Was killer, Don't you remember? You, you colored whale. it white and the color. That was a woman killer whale with breasts. Do you remember that? <laughs> it was I, in Batman. I had Batman. a dream like this. It once, was in but Batman was when I was I was interning there, and that came uh, down the pipe, and I thought it was pretty grim times. For, I was I was for Batman. I wasn't there. I was I didn't know. You were, yeah, I didn't you were know those people. At lunch or something. Uh, um, yeah, maybe. 
So anyway, no, so I got in touch with them because I really like just what they set up, which is something that's like really free form. It's like being a musician. When you say something, when you have something to say, and uh, you don't have anything to say, um, don't say it. Like, don't put something out if you have nothing to say. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's what I really loved about, I lo loved about the format. And um, so that was the big thing. And I'm a big fan of like Dark Horse books, you know, um, especially, you know, being now 30, like that's kind of what I read. Um, and uh, it actually came a lot from, you guys know a guy named Jim Kruger. He writes Earth X and all this stuff. Justice. He did Justice, yeah, Justice with me, me and Alex Justice, Ross. Yeah, yeah, and Alex Ross. He always works with Alex. I was riding a train home from class. I might have even, it wasn't yours. It was probably uh, Carmine's class or something. I was riding home on the train, and uh, I'm, like, sketching. It was Batman I was sketching, and uh, but it was Batman from the TV show, so it was really stupid looking. And <laughs> he was uh, he was this guy sitting across from me that kept staring at me, and I thought at first, I was like, oh, man, this guy's a weirdo, you know? And then eventually he goes, hey, do you work at DC? And I was like, because I had all these photocopies of shit that I wasn't supposed to have, like the new Preacher issue and stuff. <laughs> so he goes, you know, do, yeah, I would take those home with me and read them. And it actually ruined all my favorite comics because you read them in black and white and photocopies if you get bored. So, yeah. um, so I said, yeah, I interned there. And he goes, oh, I'm Jim Kruger. And then he really kind of gave me my first work, so to speak, um, as far as an artist. He would pay me out of pocket to do stuff for him that he was working on because he was such a fan of, hey, Voltaire. <laughs> he was such a fan uh, of, what, uh, of what I was doing. Um, so years later, we always had lunch. Even when I started the band, every single year, we would get together, like, if it was six months, if it was eight months, if it was a year, me and Jim still got together. And one day we're having lunch at Midtown, and I was like, I really want to do a comic again. I have all this free time since I got clean and all this money to buy art supplies now that I'm not spending. <laughs> on vodka, you know, and uh, he was like, well, let me put you in touch with the Dark Horse people, and then that's, that's it. You know? Jim's a bright guy because mm -hmm. he didn't, I, I, I respect Jim to the extent that he never waited for somebody to give him a job. If he wanted to make a comic book, he just went and made a comic book. Right, and he was doing that when I met him, too. He, yeah. was, he was freelancing, mm -hmm. working, right. and printing his own and stuff. And making his own stuff and trying yeah. to sell it that way. Like, he would just sort of say, I'm... You know, yeah. I'm gonna, I'm, I, I think this is a great idea. I think it ought to be a comic book. And to prove it, here's the comic book. Right. You know, I, right. I always thought that was real smart on his part. Right. He's, he loves writing. Yeah. You know, he has a real passion for it. I mean, that kind of boils down to everything, too. It's like how much passion. If you got, if you like, I was just saying to Joey, like, like how do you like make it or whatever? Like, how do you um, become an artist that makes it? You know, like, uh, you got to kind of really like live, breathe, eat, and shit art. Like, that's got to be it. And like, that's the only way. You know, and for a long time, that wasn't what art was for me. I kind of turned my back on it. The only thing I could live, breathe, eat, and shit was music, because that was all I had anything to say with. Um, and but that's it. Like that's really the only way to make it. You know, you just gotta. It's gotta be your life, and that's it. Yeah, you but know? you were always a comic fan. I mean, you were a comic fan. Yeah, I was from. a yeah, I was a comic fan since I was a little kid, and I drew my own comics for a long time. You know, um, written some stuff even early on, published. You know, and. Um, just do you remember the first comic you ever read? I uh, I think it was like an Archie. Really? You know? No kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you do? You love Archie? I'm a Jughead kind of guy, you know. Um, and it used to be you could always separate the kind of dude you were talking to based on whether he liked Veronica or Betty. <laughs> that was kind of a good way to gauge it. Um, I think I was a Veronica kind of guy, you know. <laughs> yes. Guy, go figure. Yes. Right. The wardrobe was better. Yeah. Um, but you remember, what were you drawn to? I mean, what, I was drawn stuff to X-Men. Like? I think yeah, right yeah. away. Yeah. I loved friggin' X-Men. I think, um, I think the, the, the one that, Cl now when I started buying my own comics, all right, I, yeah. got, I got my tonsils taken out. My grandmother had gotten me this stack still, of comics. They still do that? No, no, they don't do that. No, yeah. no, no. This is like back in the yeah. day before they realized it was needless to take out your tonsils. I, I had mine taken out. Yeah, I might take it out. And my grandma got me like, it was like Captain America, all this other stuff. It was cool, but the uh, first comic I bought was an issue of X-Men where Wolverine is crucified to a big X. Have you guys ever seen that cover? And I was raised Catholic, so to me, this set off all the alarms. <laughs> and uh, I was like, oh, this is totally going to piss off my parents. And <laughs> so so I, I bought it, um, and I loved it. I loved the fact that they were pretty much ugly even though they had like a lot of attractive women on the team, it was real weird. Like they were supposed to be ugly. Like the world didn't recognize the fact you, they could you couldn't take a picture of them. 
fucking nuts is that? <laughs> like the Amish, you know? <laughs> and uh, so you could never, you is could that, never has video. Has that been my problem? Is yeah. <laughs> So they were never going to get any credit for what they were doing, which mm. I dug, and I carried that all, you know. And then I got into, like, you know, the cool stuff. Like, I discovered, uh, as a kid, I was in marching band really briefly, and uh, I couldn't do it, you know. Like, I was a snare player, and I, <laughs> I just didn't have it, you know. Like, it was too much work. And then, like, would wake you up. And when you go to band camp, they wake you up. Is anybody in band camp ever? That's, like, hell. <laughs> I wanted to go home first night. They woke me up at, at 2 a.m. to go play the fucking drums. <laughs> so there was a kid in band camp, though, and he said, you need to go read The Watchmen, and that was it. I read The Watchmen, changed the way I felt about comics, you know, even the way I felt about the X-Men or anything. And then, so you're, you're kind of, then you're reading Watchmen, and then you're reading Dark Knight, and then after that, you go to, uh, then you get the really cool guys like Grant. Mm -hmm. Grant Morrison. Grant Morrison, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree with you there. And then you get Doom Patrol, right. Animal Man, and all yeah. this really nutty oddball stuff. And those kind of go hand in hand with the independents. I really got into crime. I mean, I, you know, I went through a Peter Bag, uh, Dan Klaus, all that stuff. I was really into that stuff. It's about when I got to SBA. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. Is that what, so it, were those like models when you started drawing, or were they, were they people that uh, you um, kind of looked at when you wanted to try and start making this stuff on your own? I think at first, and I really should have. I mean, you know, everything in life happens for a reason, but I really should have gone my first instinct, which is to just truly, when we talked about this, be myself and just mm -hmm. really, you know, yeah. I wasn't suited for superheroes. I tried drawing them because I really just wanted the, the money, and you should never do anything for the money. Like, I wanted the money so I could pay rent and shit, but, you know, you, you got to do it because it's what you're great at. Mm -hmm. You have a real passion for it more than the money, you know? Um, so I was trying to draw superheroes, and you remember when I bring submission pages that, you know, got good responses, but there was something missing. Yeah, there was a lot of Spider-Man. You were doing a lot of Spider-Man. Spider-Man, yeah. Yeah. I'm auctioning off a couple of those now. Or Are you Not really? auctioning. You I'm, they're in a gallery showing, and they're called Rejected 1 and Rejected 2. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Superman pages I did and the Spider-Man ones. They're not auctioned. They're, they're just in the gallery. But... Um, yeah, so I think I should have stuck with that insta instinct. But, but that's a real hard lesson to learn. It's it just is. like being yourself. And then, and then when you're being yourself, don't be that guy. Be yourself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, like it takes a couple right. of layers of the onion to kind of say, right. that's not really you. It's be true. You. You, yeah. you really, it really takes a lot of work to kind of Yeah, it does. It takes work pretense. to get there. And like the biggest thing, like when I, you know, the one, I, I kept thinking about, I'm really nervous when I have to do these kind of things. Like I get terrified. Like. I, you know, playing uh, in, a, in a rock band on stage is totally different than this. Like, I'm really genuinely shaking. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but, uh, so what was my point in that? Uh, uh, one of the things I thought about saying today, the really important thing that I thought of, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good, how are you? <laughs> no, I, she, this. She helped me get my portfolio together. No kidding. Do you know everybody here? Is this? I know. Oh my God, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> How have you been? You changed your hair. <laughs> yeah. I'm so, I'm so psyched. All right. Uh, all right, so. Uh, hi, honey. <laughs> but I thought a lot about what I was going to say. I think the main thing I wanted to say is like, you, uh, most of you are still in school, right? You have yet to graduate or something? Okay. When I was in school, the first year I got out was one of the worst years for me because I was terrified. Like, I was terrified before I got out. I was, I was terrified for a good three years after because I kept thinking, oh, if I, don't, if I don't make it, quote unquote, in that first year or that first two years and then it became three years, if I don't make it, I'm done. Like, I'm never going to make it. You know, like, there was this thing I kept chasing when it was like, no, really, you have to, like, live and you have to make a lot of mistakes and you have to suffer and uh, you have to make a fool of yourself sometimes. You have to, you know, really put yourself out there in order to finally, whatever making it is, you know? I don't think anybody ever really makes it, you know? Um, but, um, so that's the main thing I really wanted to say is you got time. Like a lot of these guys you'll meet that work in comics, they're like in their 30s, you know? And there's a good reason for that because they spent about 10 years failing and making lousy, lousy pages. I still make lousy pages because I didn't spend 10 years making them, you know? 
but um, so that's the main thing. I mean, like I, I kind of when I was at SBA, I wish somebody just told me to chill out and hone the craft. Yeah, a I had bit. a teacher who told me that art school should be eight years. I agree with that. And after, and after we killed him, uh, <laughs> we were we were just sitting there mentally computing nah, the tuition, that, and then and then we thought, well. But he was right, you know. It's just like I didn't start to understand how to make a page until about four years after I got out of here. You know? Right, and I, you know, even for writing, I didn't understand how to really write comics yeah. until oh. I had a lot of experience telling stories through songs, and then I got it. You oh, know? yeah. And what kind of comic was I going to do? It t it takes a long time. Yeah, and and to talk about to find out what you really want to write what about, you really really as what as you really to have to say. Right. If you don't have anything to say, like I said before, if it's going to take you five years to find it, go find it. You mm -hmm. know, if it means you got to go to Calcutta or something or take a trip or join the Peace Corps or teach school in Japan or something. Whatever it is you got to go do to get, find what it is you want to say, you need to go do that. And then uh, for me, it was 9-11. So 9-11 happening, being a New Yorker, you know, that was the trigger for what I wanted to say. Um, not specifically what I wanted to say, but it changed the whole direction of what I was doing after that. So, how so? How, in what regard? I think it made me really view, um, um, commercial art and things that were kind of out of your control in that regard is bullshit, mm -hmm. you know? And it made me view things as like, um, in this show I was working on the Cartoon Network called The Breakfast Monkey, which was... Oh, I forgot about this, yes. Yeah, there's like an animatic oh, you, yeah. <laughs> you can still find. The thing about The Breakfast Monkey is it started off with the best intentions. It was uh, absurdist, it made no sense. In a lot of ways it was like, kind of like along the lines of Aqua Teen, maybe even six months before Aqua Teen episode one had even come out or something like that. And it was just very absurd and that was the point. And then somewhere along the line it got mixed up as far as like, oh, this character's cute, it'll look good as a stuffed animal, it'll look good on a fucking pillowcase. And then that stuff started to happen. And then you sign off rights to stuff and you realize, well, I don't have control over this at all. You know, they're gonna make toys of this stuff and I'll probably get paid for it, but I don't have any control. They can make whatever they want. They can make a toothbrush, they can make, you know, a tampon, anything they want. I don't <laughs> out of what I, you know, what I make, and I didn't really like that, so. Um, so I wanted to make, so what it made me realize was this is bullshit, which art is not bullshit at all, I don't believe that, but at the time I was very angry when 9-11 happening, and I was like, that's bullshit, you know, I wanna do something that's, just says it, it's in your face, and it's right there, and I'm gonna do it right now, and, and I want something that no matter how big it gets, or how, how, how much you end up on MTV or some shit like that. Like you could still, you know, you have a little breakfast monkey. <laughs> Is that really? Really? Yeah. I didn't realize this was aired. I remember when you were going for the pilot. Yeah. Or something, or you, you were getting hooked up they with some. They just bought Aqua Teen. Yeah. And they were like, oh, it's about food. We got a show about food. And I was like, oh, but it's not about food. <laughs> like that show's about food, right? So. How did you get that hooked up? How did, how did, they, how did they find out about you? I was you in it now. There was a really weird situation. I was an intern at Curious Pictures. Oh, sure. Mo Willems was there. Yes, Mo yeah, Willems yeah, yeah, was yeah, making yeah, yeah. sheep in a big city. I was an right. intern. I was an intern a lot. That was another thing. I interned mm. at DC for a year and a half. Yeah. Um, You're not bitter about that, are you? I'm not bitter. No, yeah. not at all. I had a great time. But when I remember I, I applied for the editorial job that opened up, uh -huh. the answer I got back, do you remember the answer I got back? No. Though? We d they, they declined, even though I'd worked there already for a year and a uh -huh. half, they didn't want to hire anybody that had any aspirations of being in what comics. What job was this? Because <laughs> I, I was just, I was about to, I was about to was like lose an assistant. No, it was the and FedEx then I was gonna, and, I, and then I thought, well, Gerard's here, I'll just hire Gerard. It was the FedEx And then I would have ruined yeah. your career. Uh, and then that, yeah. I think, yeah, yeah him, and, him and Mike Carlin said that last time we did. Yeah, I know, I know. So I, <laughs> No, 9-11 would happen. I would have quit, dude. Yeah, really? Yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah. The commute sucked. How did, uh, so what's the, what is the beginning of gestation uh, or the the start of Umbrella Academy? I mean, how did that? Umbrella uh, Academy. Um, uh, was it that really something you were carrying around I for just, a long time? I, no, I just you? missed comics. Yeah. You know, if you look at Umbrella Academy, it's really, it's really born out of a love of comics, especially uh, an era of comics I had nothing to do with or I mm -hmm. wasn't around for. And that area, like the Silver Age, where it's just batshit fucking ideas. And um, so I basically, so I got clean and then I had all this free time. I had, I uh, suddenly found myself waking up at 9.30 a.m. full of energy. Sounds like a nightmare. Yeah. <laughs> I and can't I, do that now, you know? Yeah, yeah, and everybody, well, it goes away after time. <laughs> when you first get clean, you have this fucking burst of energy. It only lasts about a year and then it's gone. And then you're back to like, feeling groggy when you wake up, but 
So I had all this time, and I said, what am I going to do with this time? i got to keep myself, i got to get my brain off of uh, booze, and I can't fucking play Warcraft all day. i got to do something <laughs> creative, you know? So I said, I, I want to make something, like, you know, just like making a sweater or something. I want to make something physical I can hold in my hands. It takes three years to make records, you know, and then you got to tour on them for 18 months. I mean, it takes so long to get something physical. And the show's not physical. It's fleeting. It's gone. It's like performance art. It's done, you know, once it's over. So um, that was it. I just started drawing. You know? Seriously? Yeah. You, just designed the, you designed the characters? I just or? started designing characters, and I just was like, who's visually really weird, crazy, and cool looking. I was reading uh, Grant. They just started putting out the old Doom Patrols. I started reading those. I was really sure. inspired by those. Sure. You know? um, just how amazing they looked together. They yeah. didn't make sense together. I love that. Uh, and that's kind of, and then slowly I just started to talk about these characters and make a lot of jokes about them. And um, you know, then put a real proposal together. Mm -hmm. It was about two months before we went to make Black Parade. I made a took me about a month and a half to make a, I made a real ass proposal yeah. and did all the art, did all the writing, and John, my friend, helped me put it together, uh -huh. and we, uh, we sent it off, uh -huh. you know, and then, um, to Dark Horse, to Dark Horse. Uh -huh. and right, and while we were tracking Black Parade, I got a call from them, and they said they loved it, you know, yeah. they were hesitant, you know, and I'm glad they were, I think they should have been, because, uh, now why? Well, bec well, because I was in a rock band, uh -huh. you know, and they had done things, especially the editor Scott Alley, who edits Hellboy. He had been involved with a couple Vanity projects, and uh, he didn't want to. He didn't want to be involved in another one. He wanted to make sure I was really a comics guy, and that I wasn't just trying to be like, oh, I could do everything, you know. Look at me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so we did that, and um, and he was convinced. I think. Pretty much by the proposal, he was convinced. He just needed to kind of double check on the phone, and then it just. But started he knew rolling. it was your art. I mean, he really could see that. Yeah, he, he could see, and then he knew. And then he basically, then he knew my backstory. He knew that I, I went to school here. I learned under you. I, I an intern. I, he yeah. knew all about. And then he found out about all this stuff that a lot of people don't know about. Yeah. And then uh, he said, "All right, let's do it." And then I was like, "All right, now I got to come up with a, I got to write it." I came up with it, but um, then we had to find an artist. Right. So. Uh, I wanted somebody at first that kind of looked like me, but then I wanted somebody different after a while. And then I already got James Jean on board at this point. James Jean, who's phenomenal, you know, and he went here too. Yeah, he does the covers. Mm -hmm. um, he was on board automatically because yeah. he had done this piece in Spin Magazine. We had won some readers poll, and he drew me as a half elven ranger. <laughs> and I was so amped, okay. you know, because it was James Jean, who's my he's my favorite illustrator, you know. Um, and then uh, I met him in uh, Santa Monica when we were doing Black Parade, and I got him on board. And so we already had a cover artist. We had a writer. We just needed an interior artist. Mm -hmm. and, that, and Scott's like, there's these two guys. They're twin brothers from Brazil, and they both draw. I'm thinking maybe they both do the series, or maybe just one of them. I want you to take a look. And I saw Casanova and uh, loved the art. Oh, sure, the Matt Fraction. And, 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 uh, and I, I love the book, too, but I was like, there's a lot of panels in here. I'm not going to use this many panels. Mm -hmm. And I want to see what this guy does when I'm not using this many panels. Mm -hmm. And the payoff is like what you see in Umbrella. It's like he really, like when Gabrielle gets to get artsy and open up, that's why yeah. I give him those double pagers. Sometimes he does the weirdest shit. He'll just close in on something. Oh, there totally is. And there's a lot of like Victoriana in the book. I mean, little really bit. I really seem to be fascinated by stuff that happened at the turn of the last century. It's weird, yeah. Like at first I think it was more Victoriana and more like Hellboy inspired by that. And then uh -huh. after a while it got more 60s. You know, when more we started, it's it's set in Europe for sure, but it really started to lock into the 60s. And I don't, I don't, you know, I think it really just gravitated towards its initial roots with the Silver Age. Now, what do you do? Do you give them a plot or do you write a full no, script? No, it's a full script. It and is. there, let me tell you, the comic script is like the hardest friggin' thing in the world to write. And I talked to Grant once and he was writing a screenplay and I was like, dude, that sounds so hard. He's like, no, writing a comic is the hardest thing you'll really? ever do. If you could write a comic, you could write a movie, you could write a novel. Um, and it's hard, but I had to, no, I, I wasn't going to, you know, granted, there was people saying like, oh, we can help you write it, or not help you write it, but, you know, just give me what you got, and we'll, and I'll like, no, no, I have yeah, to, yeah, yeah. it was important to me to yeah. be like, no, I'm going to give you a real script, yeah. and if it sucks, I want you to send it back and tell me to do the whole friggin' thing over. Yeah. So it was, that was very important to me. Has that happened? I mean, have they kind of said, yeah, maybe no. you don't want to do this? No, no, and, and right, right from the start, Scott got yeah. it. 
You know that opening to the series with the really crazy series of images that happened? Sure. He got it. You know, you either get the book in those pages or you don't. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, so no, we've worked on stuff like, you know, you got to fix this, but nothing. Are you in on the design of the book, the logos and all that stuff? Yeah. I mean, has that stuff uh, that runs by you? Yeah, I picked the font, too. Like, I go, I go crazy. I do that stuff for the, like, my process, I'm really at attracted to fonts. I love them. <laughs> you know, they're very important. They could change everything. They, they really, they could make a good movie or a fucking bad movie. Like, you got some whack-ass Dungeons and Dragons font with, like, a, like a double drop shadow, it, it's gonna look terrible. And right away, you know, you, you know, you're seeing a lousy movie. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I think so. Um, so I, I had searched out a font. I was like, I want something that looks like the Prisoner, and the Twilight Zone at the same time. And then I found a font. And uh, Prisoner, if any of you guys are familiar with the Prisoner, it's a British uh, science fiction show that came way before things like Lost and and all that kind of stuff. And it's, to me, probably the greatest show ever made. There's 13 episodes. It is fucking insane. And it's apocalyptic. The last episode, it, it basically, you know, without giving away anything, well, it, it, it's like a, a fucking atomic bomb going off with the Beatles, All You Need Is Love mm -hmm. playing. I mean, it's insane. You have to see this show. You know, it's really worth it. Um, that's the biggest influence of the series when it comes down to it. Yeah, sure. So, I, so yeah, I, I was really heavily involved in every single thing. Everything. I would even send, I have did sketches I would even send to James and say, like Free Comic Book Day, he had sent this sketch that was great. And I said, well, maybe something more like this. And I'd send him one over and he'd send it back. And yeah. it would, you know, so we'd, even with James, I would trade ideas. I gotta tell you, I, I gotta hand it to you with those characters because uh, we really rack our brains thinking of new names for characters. It, you would think that everything had been done. Right. And then you had all these characters. See, I didn't know. I never, I, I never even Googled any of that stuff. Yeah. I just did it. And yeah. I was like, oh, if there's a character. <laughs> I just felt very safe from any of that stuff because uh, I don't know. I didn't feel like it was a comic in any kind of superhero universe. Yeah. You know, like I felt like I could call somebody Spider Man and get away with it right, in some weird way. Yeah. You know. Kraken, Kraken. How do you? Where do you stand on the? Oh, it's Kraken. It's like Kraken. the sea monster. <laughs> okay. You know. Is it pronounced Kraken? They made yeah. a big deal of that right, in the who pirate did? movies. Well, I don't know. It, in oh, the they call they it a Kraken. Kraken? No, they say Kraken. Uh, some people say Kraken. No, it's British, Kraken. Though. That's yeah. what. Oh, is that Kraken? Yeah. You know. Good for you. Yeah, Kraken. Yeah. He's use. I mean, he's fucking Aquaman. He's less useful than Aquaman. <laughs> and I, I was like, how am I going to take a character that's so useless and actually make him work? Mm -hmm. And all he can do is hold his breath and throw a knife. He's not even yeah. Aquaman. Now, 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 you see, somebody might exactly trying to figure out maybe a more useful character rather than just figure right. out what to do with the useless right. character. Right. Exactly. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> now, useful is a problem. You used to edit Superman. Oh, yeah. He is the most useful superhero and probably the hardest to write. Right. Yes. So. Yes. Um, sure. I'm not Was it and 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 also, 9/11 um, happens in the middle of the book somewhere, doesn't it? I mean, uh, one of the things that really got me about <coughs> one of my memories of 9/11, right. if you will indulge mm -hmm. me, is that it was a perfect day, right? Up until, yeah, and that was one of the things that really kind of struck me about this. It's like, Quino was, I don't know if anybody's read it all the way through, but it was mm -hmm. like, Quino, I recognize this. Right. You know, no, it, it is in a way. I mean, uh, you know, when we um, when we put the first single out from Black Parade, we made the video. <coughs> um, when I didn't even realize it. Well, when we got to the the set, which was this huge set, it looked like Ground Zero. I didn't really think about that, but it subconsciously and inadvertently, you start putting that stuff into your work. Yeah. You know, even an umbrella years after making that video, it's still subconsciously getting in, like Apocalypse and impending doom and ruined buildings. It's, it's always finding its way into what I do. Yeah. And uh, I think it ended up in Umbrella the same way it ended up in the video. Like, yeah. And then the single ended up coming out on 9-11, which was not planned yeah. at all. And it was just Nobody looked at the calendar and said, you know? No, <laughs> no, it was just like, this is the day it can come out, you know? And, uh, and that's, that's the way it goes. So, yes, that's I'm, I'm about a quarter done with the Pepsi, so it's time for a few questions. Time for I questions, yeah. Throw it open to the floor. No, oh, man, you want to? I feel bad picking. He'll have to pick. What? No. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. No, I'm sure yeah, we'll get some off. Yeah. Um, okay, well, here's the thing. Like, when you start to kind of, you know, if you suffer for a while, like a few years, what starts to happen is you start to get a little desperate, you know? So people will, you know, anybody that says, oh, we're going to turn your thing into a cartoon, I mean, that's exciting, you know. So 
when you go forward with that kind of stuff, you just have to be very careful about what you sign and whatever you're signing, what it means and what it says, you know? Um, and if you're basically sign, you're like there's a lot of networks that, for example, won't do shows with unless you sign them the rights. Like, uh, and you gotta say to yourself, all right, well, is this what I wanna give up? Like uh, the guys did South Park. They don't, I don't think they could, I don't think it's up to them. They get to make whatever they want, but they get to make their show. And I don't think that it bothers them too much. So it depends on what bothers you. You know, at the time it bothered me. Um, but um, that's, that's what I would suggest. You know, just, just gotta be very careful. And no matter how desperate and how excited you are to get a, a bite, you always still gotta be like, what's this gonna mean in the long run? You know, like when you're starting out even as a band, there's a lot of people that'll swarm around your band very early on and try to get you, give you big opportunities. Now I had learned a lot from Breakfast Monkey, so I said fuck off to everybody. Like, like major, major labels would come in and try to fly you everywhere and you'd be like, no, we don't want your free hotel room, we don't want a free van from you. We're gonna do this ourselves, and then when we feel like getting bigger distribution, because that's all we got from them, um, we'll take that step, you know? Um, so yeah, just be really careful. No matter how hard it gets, just try to keep that integrity, unless you're willing to see stuff on pillowcases, you know? Uh-huh. How do you feel about going to the Hummer Cellomania? Oh, um, have to go there. Sorry. right. <laughs> no, 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 fine. You know, Johnny actually kind of came, it's funny, like I'm considered occasionally kind of gothy, I guess, you know? But it's just because it's something you could never really shake. So by the time Johnny had come out, I was kind of past that kind of stuff. You know, like I, I, but then eventually people kept telling me, oh, you gotta read it, it's totally your kind of comic. And I read it and I did laugh a lot. I thought, I, no, nah, I mean, it's fucking great, you know? Like the, the violence and the cynicism and stuff. But, um, but it was definitely past the point where I was like attracted to really dark stuff, even though my whole wardrobe was still black. It was like, you know, yeah. I know you say you struggled a lot with drawing superheroes and stuff, and uh -huh. it took a while for you to find your own style, but mm -hmm. like, particularly for you, like, what did it take for you to find your own style? Um, I mean, it's gotta, well, you gotta be prepared to constantly evolve, and you gotta be prepared to give up stuff, and one of the great things Sal Amendola taught me when I was here, is you ever, like, you know, you're having those, like, it's like a three-month stretch sometimes, and it sucks, because you're only in school four years, but sometimes you'll have, like, a five-month stretch where you totally suck and you can't draw anything, he would always tell me those are the moments where you're actually really learning. And then when that stretch is over, that five months, two weeks, whatever it is, you're gonna be a million times better than you ever were before. So um, that's the kind of thing. I mean, finding it, just find out what resonates with you. If it's films, like uh, for me, it's a big thing that inspired me was silent films, like Fritz Lang films that, you know, yes. that were shown to me right here in Stavis's class, you know? I got to see a lot of that stuff, so. Um, so I drew from that, draw from an actual source. Like, don't draw from Tim Burton, draw from Fritz Lang, because that's what he was inspired by. If you draw from Tim Burton, not only is he gonna get bummed out, but you know, everybody's gonna be like, oh, this guy's just riffing on Tim Burton, so. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, he's had his hand up for a while. Okay. Yeah. Oh, it's not like that crucial. No, um, <laughs> it's not crucial. Well, I mean, it is, but. Um, with a lot of uh, team-based books, uh, especially like Watchmen, like all those characters are foils for, you know, like Batman or something like that. Right. Like in Umbrella Academy, all of the characters, I mean, you seem to hide your source as well because I, I didn't think of Aquaman uh, for a Kraken. But like, was it like a conscious like thing to, n to not really draw on a lot of those characters? It was, like I don't really, I mean, there's a lot of terms that me and Scott will throw around on the phone, like, oh, that's a total Batman or Daredevil moment that the Kraken needs to have. Like, he's, yeah. he's got a lot of Batman to him, too, and, you know, but kind of not, because he's not good at gadgets or anything. But, yeah. um, <laughs> but um, it was, I don't know if it was conscious, you know, I, I, it was more like, again, going to the source, the 60s, the Silver Age, not simply saying I want a Batman, but being like, well, what did they figure out with this character? What is, what is the problem that they discovered? or what's the catch, and then how could I, or like, just water. Instead of Aquaman, instead of making Aquaman, I just look at water and be like, what could you do with water? Like, you know, could, what if you could hold your breath? I don't know. <laughs> That's kind of awesome. In a world where nobody else is super powered at all, something really small, like being to infinitely hold your breath would make you the most powerful man in the world, I think. Or to Maybe. say anything makes it true. What's that? To like, or, uh, Oh yeah, or yeah. saying anything like the rumor, making it true, you know? Yeah. 
I didn't intentionally make the only two women characters in the book a professional liar and a villain. Like I didn't. <laughs> did, did somebody did somebody call you out on that? Is that what, or, or did you? You know, uh, I've never been really called out on it, but I've I've just very conscious of that. <laughs> um, so. But it, it, you know, the, pa you know the, the costumes, the vibe, the name, it all fit the characters, really. That's why they kind of ended up what they did. And in the end, I think the rumor is probably, like, really the most identifiable, smartest, grounded character in the series. So, and she doesn't really use her power anymore. So. You, right, the color on the hat behind him. Right, yes, you. No, you. No, you, you me? Look like, yes, oh, sir, I'm yes. sorry. <laughs> um, I, know, I know that, like, there's, there's comic books and then, like, music and film and like all these different things, they're all different me medias and stuff. When you are searching for inspiration on what you want to do, are there different ways that you approach the different uh, medias or, or what certain way do you approach them? Um, oh, as far as like researching when I'm working on something? Well, kind of like researching and just like coming up with like, like the ideas, like because you know, you're telling like these like great stories and stuff and it's like right. what, uh, what do you pull from in and uh, and do you pull from them in different ways depending on what it right is? depending on what media I'm working in or medium right um, um, it's generally the same you know and I find that not only does it kind of keep a consistent consistency to your identity in a lot of ways um, you know uh, it's just it's just how I like to work so um, it'll make the work really different like not a lot of people think to really be inspired to write a song from a film. They'll just cite like, oh, I listened to a lot of Led Zeppelin as a kid or something, you know. But to look at a film and be inspired by that, you know, um, in that regard, like uh, even a band like the Mars Volta is very similar to mine in only that regard. They watch like a bunch of Doctor Who and play keyboards and stuff. <laughs> and, you know, I'll watch a Fritz Lang film and come up with Black Parade, you know. So, um, but I'll do the same thing for uh, Umbrella Academy or any, you know. I'll watch like uh, City of Lost Children. I'll be like, wouldn't it be cool if like superheroes existed in this world? Like, what if the X Men was here, and what if they were kind of handicapped, or what if you know they were just in this strange world you couldn't explain? Like, the world would add to the characters so much. So, it's generally movies or books, um, outside sources, old paintings. Like the cover of Three Cheers is inspired by a Magritte painting. You know, so just mm -hmm. your least likely source is always the coolest, I think. You there with the, uh, yes, with in the, the reserve duck. seat with the chicken. Yeah. The duck. The duck, yeah. You, you, I'm your father. No, um, <laughs> I have a... Oh, you <laughs> picked the right joke for the right room. Let me I know. have a comment. Okay. She has a wicked awesome X-Men jacket on, <laughs> and on the back is the whole X-Men crew. And do you all want to see it? <laughs> <laughs> Come on. You're embarrassing her, but I think everybody wants to see her X-Men jacket. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> well, they want to see the X-Men. I've seen yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. There you go. Woo! Yeah. Something that I, I'd like to point out, I'm not taking my jacket off, but it is really hot in this school, right? Yeah. It's always been that way, though, right? Yeah. yeah. I came back, and I went into the, that office, and it was like a pressure cooker heat and I just yeah that's the one thing I remember about school a lot is the friggin heat man yes oh please keep your arms down if it's gonna be this hot <laughs> uh, use it you there sir in the green uh, you were talking earlier about how um, you learned how to tell a story um, in a song so did comic books were they a source of inspiration for you when you were writing uh, your songs for your albums I think yes and uh, a really strong desire to be a writer you know if I couldn't break into comics, and I wasn't going to get this friggin' show made, I wanted to write somehow, and I didn't care how it was. Um, ultimately, like, looking at guys like Nick Cave or Tom Waits, who were telling stories, and looking at the music at the time, which was pop punk bands, which were not telling stories, I saw this kind of area where it's like, well, I can tell stories here because nobody's telling stories. They're just like, you know, complaining about an ex-girlfriend. So <laughs> it made it, you know. Have I got a story for you? Yeah. <laughs> and so you, you end up right in there, you know? And it's like, it was this whole thing that I found that I was good at that nobody was doing at the time. And um, at least in the genre that I was involved in. So does that answer your question? Okay. Yeah, yeah. 
I think we yeah. have you, you there in the, in the side of the room. Yes, 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 you. Oh, well, I just want to, yeah, I just want to. Hey, ma'am, indulge just one person here. I may um, be sorry. <clears throat> <laughs> um, jo Joey knows that I've been waiting to ask this question okay. since last week. But um, why didn't you decide to draw it yourself or at least do right. an alternate cover? I did do an alternate cover, though. Um, issue one has an alternate cover that I ended up being so late on the deadline, it was pulled from the proposal. So that image on there is from the original proposal I put together. Um, it ended up working really well as a cover, but I lucked out because I was supposed to draw this new thing, and you know, I ended up in Taiwan or somewhere and couldn't do it. Uh, no, I was in Russia, and my paper got stolen. That's actually what happened. <laughs> is anybody from Russia here? Are you? I thought it was like Detroit. <laughs> Didn't you? What do you think? No? You've been to Detroit? It's like Russia. <laughs> uh, uh, I better hit this other side of the room. Oh, uh, wait, I'm what was the I'm question? Oh. I can't help so, it. Um, oh. uh, yeah, I didn't, I didn't draw it because I knew I, the book would never come out. I, I had to give that up very early. I really wanted to. Like, I was like, I'm going to draw this comic, and no way. Uh, Gabrielle, I got to say, saves the book's ass. On a, we did it Marvel style too. Like old, if you guys are familiar, Marvel back in the day basically used to be like, all right, you know, draw it, send yeah. it to the printer, put it on the. Like we were up to the wire. DC, you guys do stuff like five months in advance. Not anymore, pal. Yeah. <laughs> Not anymore. We um we couldn't do that, so we had so you to. See all this white hair? It's, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's all changing. I'm actually really trying to get gray hair. I just would like to point that out. It's o <laughs> it's overrated. Is it? Yeah. I don't care what color Reed it stays. Reed Richards. As long as it stays in my head, I don't care what it is. Um, <laughs> yeah, are you in the front? Yeah. Uh, we'll yeah, do yeah, this yeah, side yeah, for yeah, a while. Yeah, 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 yeah. Everybody will get it. Yeah, go ahead. Um, yeah. Two questions. Uh, oh, it's left. First of all, um, somewhere in the future, you know how like, uh, like comic series will often change their artists to get different styles mm. and stuff like that? Do you ever see like yourself like collaborating with maybe like Todd McFarlane or Jay Lee? Like Richard Eisenhoff or something. I don't really, you know, as much as I liked like Todd McFarlane or Jay Lee growing up as a kid, I don't identify with them. Um, out of all of them, I do identify with Jim Lee. You know, I, I think, but he's a guy that really grew and kind of spread his wings very early when everybody else was still doing basically what they were doing in Marvel, just better, or with more lines. You know, he was really putting less lines in, and he. He was always trying to push that, you know? It's like contrast, like very high contrast of like Yeah, touch. he just explored things. Like yeah. you could tell he read Sin City and was inspired by it, mm. and he did Death Blow. You know, you could, you could tell that kind of stuff. Um, I don't necessarily see, I like pinups and stuff. Like Becky and Vasilis did two amazing pinups. So it's always great to see, and I've always wanted to do maybe like little side stories, but I really don't see anybody but Gabrielle doing it, you know? And once he realized that world, like, that was it for me. Yeah, I like, see that. And a lot of the reviews you read, they will say the same exact thing. I can't imagine anybody right. else drawing right, this. Right, right, right. So we're in, me and him are in it to the end. Hopefully nothing happens. But uh, One more question. Do you ever see like a spillover in the mediums of like music and, and, and comics? Maybe like uh, an Umbrella Academy My Chemical Romance music video no. or something? No. <laughs> I, I, I was very, we try, you know, I was very careful about it. In fact, only let Dark Horse put the band name on one trade ad just so people could at least uh, uh, at least retailers, and it wasn't for readers' sake, it was more like for previews, so at least retailers could be like, oh, this guy's in a band. Mm. Um, but that was the only time they were allowed to put the band name on it. And, and if, you know, so uh, we, you know, we're very careful about keeping the two very separate. And that doesn't mean I wouldn't eventually want to do something fun like an Umbrella Academy soundtrack and in Pro Tools or something, or just, you know, in a garage band. Um, <laughs> But um, but yeah, the two will never will never mix. Mikey Way wore an Umbrella Academy shirt on stage, though, so that's a crossover. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, mine's more of a general question. Sure. Um, if you had the chance to spend like a day with anyone from history, who would you choose and why? <laughs> wow. That's crazy. I actually I <laughs> I would choose to spend it with my wife, out of anybody oh. in history. Oh man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> It's the good truth, though. That's awfully good. Hi, you, you there, right to the. Hi, um, I'm not a comic expert, but okay. um, I'm not either, so it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, it's, I remember you talking about fonts, and uh -huh. um, I was wondering if you ever like collide with any graphic design like 
elements? Like, if you ever, like, like think about that? Uh, yeah, a lot. I mean, like, I'm a fan of guys like Chip Kidd. And, um, like, I think he's a fucking genius. And, uh, um, and the guy who's Acme Novelty Library. Uh, Chris, Chris Ware. Ware. Yeah. I, I, the guys like that is what really started to get me really interested in graphic design. There was parts of me that wished when I had gotten out of SVA, I, I don't think this way now, but I wished I had kind of taken graphic design just yeah. so I could have the skill. But, um, because I find it fun. Like, I, like when we started the band, I'd do a lot of t-shirt stuff. Didn't you, did a, uh, didn't you do a t-shirt for Thursday? Yeah, I did a t-shirt for Thursday. I, so I would, and I was using the lousiest programs, like the free shit that came with <laughs> the computer. But I'd scan my art, and I'd, I basically did a lot of band shirts for a while. So before I even had a band, I was doing graphic design band shirts and just winging it. I have been winging it for years, though. It's all winging it, <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. Uh, what do we got? Right, right, right behind the woman with the duck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, yeah. You know, for um, artists, it's really easy to just like take your pages to a Comic Con and shove it in someone's face. Right. But is there anything that you can recommend for someone trying to get into the business uh, for writing? Uh, for writing specifically, yeah. I've heard writing is very hard because you usually yeah, have to be kind of teamed up with an artist. And then you kind of both have to sell yourselves in a lot of way to the company that you're both a good idea and that your series is a good idea. I mean, that's kind of, I would, I would never, I, even, even up to the point where I was pitching to Dark Horse, I never pitched anything without art, yeah. you know? Um, even if I wasn't going to be the artist, they had to visualize it. I mean, breaking in is so tough. I'm going to tell you guys a story, and I don't know if this is going to bum you out, but so I, I used to intern at DC, and... <clears throat> I'll see you later. Yeah. <laughs> No, no, I made it a point to try to say this. Uh, so I, I, I would, uh, I was really, I wanted to be a writer, I think, more than anything, because I didn't feel like I was getting that great at art as fast as I had wanted. So I was like, let me focus on writing. So I didn't turn, and one day I, say, I saw Grant Morrison come in, right? And he basically looked like King Mob from The Invisibles. Literally. He was wearing a full vinyl outfit, like a, a, some kind of crazy jacket with spikes all over, rubber spikes. Must and have been Wednesday. Yeah, and he, <laughs> he comes in, and I was like, huh. I was like, that's Grant Morrison. And everybody was really psyched he was there. A uh, month later, I'm working there, and Paul Pope comes in. Now, he's wearing this big fur jacket, and he looked amazing. And I was like, huh. I was like, and they were really psyched. And he came in, I was like, man, these guys want to hang out with rock stars. I was like, that's like, I was, I was like, that's who they want to hire. Yeah. So I was like, I'll, so if I just become a rock star, then, <laughs> <laughs> then I'll get to write comics. And I know that's a really lousy answer, but it's, it's the story I've been telling for years, especially when I hung out with Grant Morrison for the first time. I was like, you know, but in all seriousness, um, um, it's tough. Sometimes it, it does take searching out other avenues and finding, like apparently the guys in South Park, they really wanted to be in a band, so they came up with South Park. Um, a lot of people take really crazy avenues to get where, if, as long as it gets you to the end result, you know. But then sometimes along the way, you might lose your end result. But breaking in, I mean, it's getting to know people. It's being sincere. It's being genuine. It's not being full of shit. That's the big part. That's yeah. the real big one, you know. That's the big one. Um, and if people could smell a kind of passion on you, and a, you know, more so than natural ability, passion, and being a good person, always going to win out. I mean, you know. The guys that I play in with my band were chosen not specifically for musicianship. It was for personality, and it was for passion more than anything. So I think that's what always wins, don't you? You have to live with them. Yeah, you have to live with them, even if it's just phone calls oh, or a half yeah, hour yeah, every two yeah, weeks. Yeah, like, you, don't wanna, you don't have to. I wish I had a better answer for that. The, that young woman there, with the, right, right behind the duck woman. Mm -hmm. um, I'm interested in getting into drawing for bands or art. Do you have any advice for that? I think that is actually a lot easier because one thing bands usually almost always need is t-shirts or somebody to help design their website. If you, if you can do that kind of stuff, I know that when we were starting out as a band, Ray Toro had to learn how to build a website in, in five days or something. He got the books and like we literally spent hours in his um, you know bedroom that he shared with three brothers like figuring out how to build a website. Um, had we known an artist that knew how to do that, we would have asked them. You know, I think 
simply go into a show, and you got to start obviously smaller, like, you know, you can't really necessarily go to an arena rock concert and go up to their merch guy, but generally meeting the bands. I mean, if you go to a lot of shows, especially like VFW hall shows or like shows at like little punk clubs, um, generally they probably don't even have anybody selling their merch. It's probably the band themselves. And if you have some stuff, I, I, you know, just drop it off or give them a link to a website and they might need some designs, you know. I think that stuff is, you know, um, I think that stuff works a lot, networking on a kind of smaller scale. So. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, we'll move to the glasses to your immediate left. Um, when you were start, I mean, even now, when you were starting off, were there any particular illustrators that you, or illustrators or comic book artists that you would look up to or take ideas from or at least imitate I mean right. I find a lot of artists imitate other artists style right. to learn mm -hmm. and were there any particular artists that you pulled from once I discovered Alex Toth that was it you know <laughs> you guys are anybody familiar with Alex Toth at all he is um, he's, the, he's, the, he's the well it was also I then realized for the rest of my life once I discovered Alex Toth that I was going to be chasing that the rest of my, like how amazing, genius, and perfect it is, how it's just the correct amount of lines, how he's excluded some lines sometimes. He's the guy that des designed uh, the Super Friends and right. Hanna-Barbera. Space, space Ghost. He's the Space Ghost guy. Now, you watch Space Ghost, it looks kind of crappy. That's because none of that stuff is him. Uh, he did all the design work, though, and all that elegant kind of line work is all him. But he was the main one. I mean, I, read, I used to read a lot of Bloom County when I was a kid. I have no idea why, but... <laughs> Um, so that guy, Burt Breathe, uh, I don't even know how to say his name, but I looked a lot at him. And then after I got into Toth, I started to get into the European guys. And that was like... Which one? Do you remember which one? Uh, there was a Jew in Communist Prague. I never oh, remember his Giardino? name. Giardino, yeah. Giardino, um, Tintin, mm -hmm. things like that. It opened this whole world for me, you know? Um, and then I tried to kind of emulate that stuff. It's also sometimes about where you're looking for your influence. Could, you could end up with something way more interesting if you're an American guy inspired by European comics, uh, or like Gabrielle, who is a Brazilian guy who's inspired by European, European comics. comics. You end comics, up yeah. with this, and, and, and a little bit, a little bit of American, a little Mignola, a little yeah. American, and yeah. you end up with this style that's really yeah. kind of yeah. crazy. So. Little Eduardo Riso. Yeah, I love him. Um, well, can, can yeah. I, I just really simple. Oh. Do you have a favorite comic? Do I have a favorite comic? Yeah. Um, like of all time? All <laughs> time. If you had to pick one. Um, well. No, I mean, it's like so easy to say The Watchmen because, I mean, it's like, like that's like the shit, man. I mean, that's like, fair. there's things done in that comic that yeah. will it's never really be done again. It's amazing. You know? Like, you'll read that thing 10 years down the line and mm. still be like, oh, I didn't, I didn't, I never saw that panel, you know? Um, it's, yeah, it's good. Stick with that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a good yeah, answer, why not? right? Um, 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 the woman in the X-Men shirt, <laughs> and, then, and then we'll go to um, that fellow up there. I have this thing, this, this has to do with like videos, but um, mm -hmm. I have this thing where I take songs and I like write out almost storyboards to make my own music videos for them. Mm -hmm. what, what inspires you to make your music videos? Like, um, I, I, I do storyboards too, basically. Um, most of the videos that I'll either draw an image or I'll storyboard, there was a whole introduction video piece that was supposed to go along with Black Parade Records. I storyboarded from start to finish and almost nearly made an animatic out of it myself. Um, wow. And, uh, <laughs> but what's inspired me for that is the same thing as inspired me. I mean, m the majority of what inspires me is life, ultimately, yeah, you know, and it's not death. I think a lot of people think I'm death obsessed, but I'm really <laughs> inspired, no, I know how you feel. inspired by <laughs> life, you know? I mean, you know, death is something that happens, but life is really what's going on. Exactly. And, uh, so, uh, but it's the same things, you know, the videos. I mean, and you know, things like City of Lost Children and you yeah, know, yeah. It's very specific vibes, silent films and whatnot. Good Got stuff. a favorite Fritz Lang film? Um, Caligari. Yeah? I think Caligari, yeah. yeah. It looks crazy. Yeah, it, do <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> that, that fellow up there has been patient. Okay, I got two questions, and one of them's little. But, um, okay, first, do you like Garfield? You're not, you're not getting the you second know? question. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> um, 
I mm. liked, when I was a kid, I liked the Garfield Halloween special. Did you guys ever <laughs> see that? Okay, touche, touche. I'll Gar take that. Garfield is, Garfield's kind of lame, though. Yeah. <laughs> Don't you think? Oh, okay, my bad. No, 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 no. Um, I, you know, I'm not a big fan of, like, um, like strips and that kind of humor, like newspaper <coughs> strips. I'm not dog, I mean, are you a strip artist? Is that why you're asking? No, well, I'm a film Do you film draw major. Garfield all day? Is Whoa, yeah. easy there. Okay, is that your dad? Isn't, or this something? isn't a witch hunt, man. I was just asking a question. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and my second question was, is that you said that writing uh, cartoons was easier than, like, making movies and stuff and writing scripts for movies. Right. And I was at wondering why you say that, because I'm a film major. And oh, right. So I just, uh, just wanted. Well, I didn't say that. I was quoting Grant Morrison, who had said that to me. He's because I never, I've never tried to write a screenplay. Oh, I, I would imagine it's impossible. I mean, it seems hard. Yeah, you know? I suck at it. I mean, that's why I was asking. I was like, it's because you're reading Garfield all day. Right? Oh, <laughs> easy, bud. Okay, dude. I'm sorry. No, like I, I apologize. I'm not trying to rag on you. Okay. Can I? No. Yeah. <laughs> um. I like um. No, it's it's you know it's uh. I'm sure it's relatively similar, you know? I, I, I've heard that one page of screenplay is supposed to it's be like a minute of film. Yeah. I wouldn't be able to think like that. Like, I'd just be writing and then I'd get really excited about a description of somebody's pants and then <laughs> it, would, it would go. It would just go. It'd be like a 10 hour movie. Yeah, because, I mean, I figure when you're writing like a, like a cartoon, it's like very open ended because you don't have to have like, uh, like actors, you know, like. Fighting killer whales and with well, there's like variables, shit. I guess, in film where it's like, oh, maybe this actor's gonna take a little longer to write his line, or maybe, yeah. But the problem is with comics, and this is a huge problem. You only have 22 pages. Oh, is that like the limit? Yeah, it's pretty much the standard limit. 22 pages per episode, yeah. Per episode, and and then you you know, and then you have to have a limit to your episodes sometimes. And so then in 22 pages, it's not a lot of room. Yeah. And well, it's like, an, it's like anything else. Screenplay, 90 minutes, two hours. Right. I mean, it, it, there's always going to be a limit. There's always a limit, you know. But novels, there's never a limit. But there should be, probably. <laughs> novels, for the quitters. Ask, ask that J.K. Rowling woman if, uh, oh, yeah. if she needs any limits, if she wants to hear about limits. Uh, that woman right below, right there, right oh, to, to, your, like to your, the next row in front of you. Uh, okay. There you go. That was easy. All right, it's, it's bugging me. So are you uh -huh. going to tell us how the horror did that to that diner? <laughs> oh, the <killed>. horror? <laughs> you mean oh, yeah. the boy? Yeah. You know what I saw recently? Um, a lot of people are now calling the boy the horror, right? Yeah, that's what we it's saw not you the were horror. calling yeah. him. Who is he? Well, I better clear that up You soon. better clear that up. <laughs> no, the horror is the guy that died a long time ago. All right, so who's the boy? He's number five. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's just, he never got a name, so he's called number five. How did he kill him? He's, you, actually, you're going to learn a lot about the boy in series two. Awesome. That's kind of like the thing, and... Uh, you're gonna learn why he's like that. You're gonna get the whole truth about really what happened to him. So like what happened to him when he told his version of the story of how he got back, that's not the whole story. He's not lying, but it's not the whole picture, so. Cool. Uh, okay, the woman right behind you in green. Um, not many people are in the art world and the music world, and everybody from the music world says the music world's really hard to get into, it's right. the all cutthroat, and everybody from the art world says that same thing about right. theirs. Which do you feel is uh, harder, or not even harder, just like, I don't know, like, which you, how do you feel about that? Oh, clearly it's comic books. <laughs> <laughs> Forget it. Uh, <laughs> the thing is with music, you're, 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 you're in, you run into a territory that it is very cutthroat and it's different. It's because you have attention involved and, and fame. And when you, you don't have those in comics and you generally don't have them in the art world. I mean, you've had people that have riffed on fame like Warhol and things like that. But, you know, if you're, generally if you're a guy that you're a famous sculptor, you can go to the grocery store or the mall, no problem, you know. But a music business is tough and it's, I think it's, if you've kind of quote unquote got it, it's easier to break into, but keeping it is the hard part, I guess. Like, you know, it's retaining it and really kind of having the strength to really keep up with it and put up with the, the, the bullshit, which is the music business. You know, and the minute you, you allow that to affect your music, the music business, they always say this, and music and the music business have nothing to do with each other. They're completely right. Um, once you let one infect the other, like, you know, uh, you run into some serious problems. But I think if you got a band and you're fucking great and you're amazing live and you kick people's teeth in, like, 
you, you're gonna, I mean, who's not gonna go see that? You know, like that was the thing with us. We just wanted to be a fucking amazing live band and like just like, make an experience that you were not only never gonna see again, but you, we didn't even know if we were gonna play again, especially early on because we break so much shit of our own and <laughs> I mean, we were careless with our own bodies to a very large extent. I mean, I uh, do that a lot, but I can't see anything. So yeah, it's like there's a story where I, I <laughs> there's that, you know. I, the story where like we met our lawyer and the, the first night she came out to see us, I got my, my mouth smashed open by my guitar player <laughs> and it was fucking blood everywhere. I didn't even know if I'd be able to like play the next show and that was the way it is, you know. Um, so I think it's, you know, you could in a way pass that into art. I mean like if you make something, if you do something that absolutely nobody else can frigging do, I, it shouldn't be hard. You know, you kind of got to, like Chuck Close, like, you know, that guy. He does something I don't think anybody in this room has the fucking patience to do, mm -hmm. basically. <laughs> and, but, you know, and he does, he does it great. Yeah, it's amazing stuff. Mm -hmm. um, that one right there, right, right around here behind the podium. Is she coming down for it? Is she? Oh, oh, uh oh. Um, kind of a silly question, but what's your favorite font? My favorite font? No, that's, a, that's an amazing question. I've never gotten that before. What or is Comic that? Sans. Don't say Comic Sans. Well, that comes it's with the computer, like Funky right? Monkey or yeah. like something like that. No, Shelton um, and Fiesta Bold. Bold. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah um, I think my favorite font is a Futura Bold. I'm a big fan. I think you know, <laughs> Futura. There you go. No serifs at all. Just no, like no serifs. I do. Oh, Trojan. Big fan of Trojan. Trojan was pretty much what I based every piece of artwork off Revenge off of. Everything. That was done for that record. Posters, everything was Trojan. So, I like that question. Yeah. I'm sorry. Say again. Okay. Um, I guess we're done. That's it. Ethan uh, has his arm up for a while. Oh, 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 Ian. Yes, sir. And then she. Uh, uh, let's, let's, let's. Yeah, I'll never hear the end of it if Ian doesn't get to ask this question. <laughs> this better be good. Oh, you know hey, hey, Joey. Yeah. Huh. Uh, I have two questions. Okay. Uh, first oh, one is how much does your artist influence you uh, on your comic. Oh, right. Like, uh, if the, you like send a page and he's like, oh, that's really cool, but what if we do it this way? Right. I mean, I'm just curious, that uh, okay. relationship. He influences me a great deal. M the, the more I get to know him, too, like, that's why the issues kind of get better, even storytelling-wise on my end as we went along, because I got to really learn what he was doing and what he was great at. Um, that's why issue five is still my favorite because it, it's like it's the best splash of the series. It's it, it's it's me and him really working together exactly like I'm doing. I'm using the text to work well with his drawings and the the script. So, um, but you know, there's times where Gabrielle sent a script. He he's like one of the few artists that he'll send you like a like a thumbnail that's like that big. You approve it. You get back a final piece of art. That's it. And and yeah. Um, he, he changes stuff a lot, and he'll tell you why he does it, and uh, we let him always do it, you know. If, as long as it works, we totally let him do it. Um, but yeah, I like collaboration. That's why I started the band. I like working on a team, you know. Um, it's lame working alone. Uh, creating something special with somebody is, is an amazing thing, you know. So you have a second part, right? Oh, uh, because you've known Joey for so long, and he's uh -huh. my storytelling teacher. You got to tell me like a really embarrassing story about him. You know, you know nothing, right? You know, he <laughs> take your best shot. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. We he he loves to go to the Strand. Whoa. You know. Can we wrap this yeah. up so I can you go? You go to the Strand. Yeah, he's probably gonna go tonight. I'm not right. shitting you. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. Um, uh, we used to. We no, we just had a great time. I learned a shitload of stuff in his class about writing. You know, it was one of the most important classes that I took here next to maybe even some of the stuff in foundation year. I just, it taught me how to craft a story. Like he told me the books to read and then we really hit it off. So we would do his class and then we'd go to the Kiev or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Boy, he, I missed that. Yeah, I heard it closed, right? Yeah, it's all gone. And sometimes it was me and him. Sometimes it was me and Helfer. Right. A lot of times though, we'd walk around, talk about life and bullshit. And that was like really helpful. If you got a buddy you can do that with, that I think really helps yeah. the writing. Um, I do that with Scott now. A lot of my yeah, process huh? with Scott is flying to Portland, saying I'm going to write the comic, but then walking around smoking cigarettes and talking about the Rolling there's, Stones. There's nothing like that. Yeah. There's yeah. just nothing like that. Boy, I missed that too. I'll, 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 let's go to this woman with the red hair and her hand up. Okay. 
Because yeah, she's always a perfect match. Uh, do you have plans to do uh, your own comic, like draw and do the story? I would re I would really love to, you know. Like I I do draw a lot. I paint. I still do a lot of stuff. Uh, I I I've, I've been wanting to adapt. Uh, I wanted. I think I wanted to start with an adaption. Uh, I'd really been thinking about like you guys know that album by Tom Waits, The Black Rider. I thought about adapting that into a comic and drawing the whole thing myself. Uh, another guy I gotta say that's a, probably one of my biggest influences is Al Columbia. I don't oh know really? Guys, no kidding. Yeah. He's like. I mean, but he's an influence as far as like music. I mean, the guy's insane. Mm -hmm. He's only has three comics you can yeah, find yeah, out yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you should, I swear to you, the greatest, I, I, the, either you get it or you don't, but the best comic purchase you will ever make is Biologic Show Issue Zero and Issue One by Al Columbia. It, that changed my life. Like, discovering Toth was really cool, but then that changed my life as far as how I really felt about comics. And I, that's something I was really chasing for a lot of years, even to this day. I mean, there's stuff in the biologic show that I straight up like rip off for lyrics, you know, that are just amazing. You know, there's lines like, it's so bleak, you know, it's the grimmest, blackest thing I've ever read. It's the most disgusting comic I've ever read. It's the foulest thing. And yet, fairly clean. And yeah, fairly clean. Yeah, yeah. like no nudity, no, yeah, 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 yeah. a lot it's of blood that, though. It's, it's not that kind of, of yeah, blood. it's not that kind of bleak. It's actually, um, uh, yeah, there's stuff straight up in there that I love. And uh, uh, he's so, I've always wanted to meet him, but I was always afraid to meet him. <laughs> and uh, uh, I'm trying to think, what question? What was the question? Mm. I was talking about Al Columbia, sorry. <laughs> if you're uh, ever going to do your own comic. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, I really want to though. You know, I don't know how I would draw it or what kind of style I'd do it in, but. I'm dying to draw. I mean, there, you know, I wanted to like do something that was a lot like Ingmar Bergman's Seventh uh, Seal, Seal, and think something like that. I mean, something with the devil. I don't know. It's just black and white for sure, though. I think would be mm -hmm. fun. I, I I need to give her the last word. Oh yeah, she needs the last yeah. word, huh? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> um, Duck wants to know if you've any hidden talents, and if you do, can you show them to us? <laughs> like weird talents. Um, the only thing I can, the only hidden talent I have, I could tie a knot in a cherry stone with my tongue. That's it. And I can really do that, but I haven't done it in I years. I can put my leg behind my head. I haven't head been challenged. I need help with the second one, but I can do it. Oh, no, <laughs> but no, we believe you. <laughs> I don't think I have any hidden talent. I think, right? I think, uh huh. Do I have any hidden talent? You're not hiding anything, pal. All right. this is, there's been nothing this hidden about true. you for years. This is true. Uh, I think, uh, I think that wraps Peace it up. Out. Huh? Yeah, oh, okay. Peace out. Peace out. Yeah, absolutely. Peace out. There you go. In the words of the little girl, peace mm -hmm. out. <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs> I got a kiss so bad. Uh, Can you yeah, sure. Let's do it. Let me piss real quick. <laughs> <laughs> I drank two bottles oh, of water. Oh, look at that. Oh, that's adorable. <laughs>